You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Liar. So the last place we left off, uh, we had uh, kind of walked in on King Rainer while he was grieving, and he told us about the loss of his wife and how that has affected him and his son. And well. Lord Leuven had a, a relived it all in a dream from Rainer's perspective, and that raises a lot of questions, and he is currently busting his way into the throne room to tell the king about what he saw. All right, so here we go, guys. Let's jump right back into it. Uh, please sit back and enjoy. I'm going to you for the next 20 minutes at Alarm Chain. You are up. Here we go. <clears throat> God, that music is wonderful. Okay, all right. <clears throat> Hello, Lord Leuven. What is the meaning of this chaotic entrance? Lyle leans into the doorway with a sheepish grin. Your, your Majesty! Lyle! Yes, we all know who we are. Really, who's she? I point at the woman who is now standing up from her chair. War Minister Rain. Reen? Rain? I'll say Rain. Elizabeth Rain. A pleasure. I try to get a word into Rainer, but she turns to him. Is this that ambassador you were telling me about? I'm guessing he's from Aaron. Rainer? They both turned to me with shocked expressions. Lyle steps into the room, raising his hands in a comforting manner. Yes, Leuven? Rainer's look of surprise changes to one of genuine concern. I take a deep breath and begin. Remember the talk that we had last night? A searing burn works its way through my head. I almost collapsed onto the table from the pain, but I managed to support myself with, an aw with my arm as I bring my hand to my head. Someone, sh someone should get Leif. <clears throat> oh, Elizabeth, wow, your, your voice. <laughs> someone should get Leif. He isn't looking too good. No, I'm fine. I just need to know about last night. Leuven, this isn't the time to talk about that. Please, Rainer, you have to trust me. You said that you could remember every detail of that day correct. He doesn't answer at first. My head is splitting open. Yes. I say the next sentence, tapping my finger on the table for emphasis. Who did it? There is a very long pause before he speaks. There's a look of curiosity on his face. It was a bandit. Yes, but what did he look like? Why do you need to know this? Please, you have to trust me. He looks down at the table. My head feels like it's going to crack like an egg. I hate to do this, but I have so many questions and very strange things are happening. Things I don't understand. We don't know the exact species, but it was a reptile. He was dressed in, bla in a black no, brown cloak, and he was carrying a wretched dagger. Oh my god! Razor sharp pain shoots through my body, starting at my feet and ending at my head. It causes me to arch and lean back, looking up. Ah! Leuven! I feel myself fall into someone's arms. Oh, Lord. Oh, that's dramatic. Oof. What happened to him? Going to be okay? He should be fine. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> my eyes feel like they have been sealed shut and my head is throbbing with a dull pain. I'm laying in bed on my back with a few pillows propping my head up. It's very cold. I force my eyes open. This seems oddly familiar. Both Lyle and Leif are on the other side of the room. Leif is sitting at my desk writing on a piece of parchment. Lyle has his hands on the desk and is leaning over it watching Leif, what, watching what Leif is writing. Leif looks very small in my chair. His shoulders barely come up, to, come up over the desk. I suddenly sit up in bed and they turn to me. You're awake! Leif, Leif hops out of the chair, and they both walk up to my bed. How long have I been out? I pull the covers up a bit, realizing I'm not wearing a shirt. About a day. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting these voices mixed up. So many voices to remember. About a day. Today is the winter solstice. What happened? You tell us. You were really distressed and on edge in the dining chambers. It all comes back to me after he says that. I do seem to remember something like that. I hope I didn't offend the king. He wasn't offended, just confused. The war minister was more confused, though. You let out this painful yell before falling over. 
Oh, that must have been a great first impression. <laughs> I'm sure it was. He says this with all the sarcasm he can muster. I managed to catch you before you hit the floor, though, so you should be fine. He says this with a tone of proudness in his voice, which I can't help but smile at. I feel fine, though. My head hurts a little, and I still can't shake the thought of that creepy dream I had, but I feel fine. It predicted information that I had no knowledge of. I can still remember everything clearly, right down to the nearest detail. Would you mind telling me what you had, what had you so troubled? I take a moment to gather my thoughts before telling him. He grabs a quill and a piece of parchment and gets ready to write. I had this dream the night before. It was about the murder of Queen Elena. 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 El Elena. Elena. Guys in the comments, can you tell me which, which one is correct? I think it's Elena. Who told you about that? Rainer did, just the day before. The only problem with the dream was that it felt too real. I didn't realize this at first, but I was experiencing it from Rainer's perspective. I also didn't have any control over anything. I remember the horrible feeling of not being able to do anything as those horrible events unfolded before me. I must have been worse for, for Rainer, considering he actually couldn't do anything. The scariest part about it was that there were things in the dream that I didn't even know about. Events, people, all sorts of things. Every detail was laid out for me on a silver platter, and Rainer confirmed some of these details for me, which is that I had feared the most. I pause and rub my eyes. Lyle is staring at me with a curious look. Leif is gazing at me, taking everything in and giving me his full attention. I had hoped that it was just a coincidence, but it feels like much more than that. What things did you see? I saw Elena's murderer. He was a reptile in a black cloak. What color were his eyes? He blurts out. He's, he blurts this out immediately with a look of determination on his face. Red. Almost glowing. He crosses his arms tightly across his chest and then looks at the floor with a thoughtful glance. I want to tell him about how I saw him in the dream, but Leif speaks before I can. This is very odd. He folds up the piece of parchment and places the quill back on the desk. Thank you for telling me this. I'm going to go and see what I can figure out the little time before the festivities. You seem well enough to go about your day, but I would suggest resting up a bit before tonight. He walks over to the door and opens it. I look for something to help with the nightmares, and I'll let you know if I find anything. He steps through the door and closes it with a soft thud. Lyle is still standing there, looking at the floor. He seems afraid. I can see his tail tucked between his legs. What's wrong? He looks up at me with a solemn look. He anxiously rubs his thumb between his fingers. Lyle? Yes, Leuven? How did you get that scar? He brings a paw up to his face and gently rubs at the old wound. Um, I got it from the... He fidgets with his paws and his tail droops a bit. I know this being a, must be an uncomfortable topic, but would you mind telling me what happened? You don't have to do it if you don't want to. His chest inflates as he takes a deep breath and he begins to speak. I told you about how I squired for Lord Bren before I was knighted, correct? Yes. I was 13 at the time, and the king requested Lord Bren to meet them halfway at an outpost in the canyons. The king and queen were on their way back to the, from the trip to Driss. They wanted him to be there for an important discussion with a Drizian diplomat. It was a long trip, and I was a long trip, and I was very excited. It was my first time outside the kingdom. I didn't get to see much, though. It's the northern run in some of the canyons. They were huge, but nothing like the mountains west of here. He jerks his head in the direction of the window where the mountains roll down the water's edge. On our way back, the attack happened. I was among some of the soldiers who were part of their defense. I don't have much training, but I didn't have much training, but I held my own pretty well. And thankfully I didn't have to kill anyone. I can see his words catching his throat. But I fought him. The man who killed her. Really? I'm sure of it. His tail is now sticking. His, his tail. His tail is now stiffly tucked between his legs. It was a very quick fight. I was running towards the royal carriage, and I cut his tail. He turned around and grazed me with his knife, and I cut a huge, and he cut a huge gash into my face. But thankfully, my eye is fine. I can still see out of it, but not as good as my other. He looks at the ground, clenching his fist. Can we not talk about this? Of course. Thank you. I just don't like to talk about it because every time I ask myself a question, what would have happened if I had stopped him? Things could have been different, and I just... 
I can see his eyes welling up with tears. I get out of bed and envelop him in a warm embrace. His armor is cold on my bare chest. It's okay. None of that is your fault. We can't change the past. He seems a bit shocked at the sudden physical contact, but he returns the favor and wraps his arms around me. Thank you, Leuven. I just... That was a really awful event. We step back from each other and I sit down onto the bed. I just have one more question and it's not about that. What is it? Your family, the Reed family. Yes. I'm not very familiar with them. In Aaron, we don't hear much of the other nobles, especially from Lyre. Would you mind telling me about them? Not at all. The Reeds are a very old family. Records of our lineage dates back almost 500 years. Wow, that's a long time. He nods his head enthusiastically. Yes, and our family has served the Ossian family for generations. At one point, we were the second most powerful family in all of Lyre. But, over the years, that has changed. The Reeds are dying out. There isn't a lot of us left. My father, Marcus Reed, is the lord of our large keep in the Golden Timber. I am his only child and have no interest in women, so I cannot continue the family name. He says this in a hushed voice. He can pester me all he wants, but I'm not getting married. Especially now that I've given my life and heart to this kingdom. So our family will most likely die out, but I have accepted it at this point. Once my father passes away, I'll be the last Reed. It has a nice ring to it. I guess it does. I just have one more question. Yes? What does your family crest look like? Ah, yes! It's, um... He pads over to my desk and grabs a piece of parchment and a quill. Do you mind? No, not at all. He starts drawing on the paper as he, de as he describes it. The area where I'm from, the Golden Timber, is a little bit northwest of here. It's called that because it's when it snows, the trees still shine like gold as the rays of sunshine pass through their snow-covered leaves. It is said that when my ancestor, Radolf Reed, was born, it was during an eclipse. This is the when the founders of my family decided to make our family crest an eclipse. He finishes his drawing and swipes the parchment off the desk. Here, this is what it looks like. Ooh, okay. He holds up a drawing of a symbol that I recognize. It was painted on his armor in my dream. I have never seen this symbol anywhere else, though. It's not on Lyle's armor, considering the royal armor is plastered with the Ossian crest. Another sharp pain throws to my body as I try to remember. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Just a small headache. Lies come easy to me when I'm telling half-truths. You should rest for a bit. The ball is tonight, and I don't think you'll want to miss it. You have your outfit ready to you have your outfit ready, right? Yeah. Great. Will I be seeing you there? Yes. I'll be there. I'll be doing my job and, and I'll be there. Now is my chance. I really want to ask him if he would like to go with me. Are you uh going with anyone? I can see his tail swish side to side. No, I'm not really going with anyone. I would rather go just to have fun, you know. Oh, yeah. Damn it. I feel the same way. The next few seconds are extremely awkward. Why am I so bad at this? I find it silly how I'm able to ask heavy questions like the ones I've been asking for the past day, but I can't ask a handsome wolf to a dance. Now that I'm thinking about it, I've never been good at romance. Well, I'm gonna leave now. I suggest you get some rest. Okay. He walks over to the door. I'll see you this afternoon, then. Of course. He opens it and walks through, closing it softly. Once the door is closed, I lay down in bed and pull the covers up over me. I'm still trying to comprehend the dream that I had. It was similar to the others, but much more vivid. Considering the way things played out, I'm not entirely opposed to the idea of, being, of it being some sort of vision. That just scares me more, though. I lay there for a few minutes, trying to, trying to fall asleep, but my mind keeps racing. After a couple minutes of focusing my mind on other things, I managed to become drowsy. Lord, you don't get that voice. The next few hours are filled with restless sleep, as I find myself tossing and turning in bed. Day 6, Chapter 6, Day 20. Hmm, wonder how today's gonna go. I slowly come to, feeling extremely delirious. Thankfully, there were no nightmares or any dreams for that matter. My sleep was very empty and as black as night. 
I suddenly realized that the disturbance that had woken me up was the noise of knocking at my door. The knocking gets louder as I stumble out of bed and throw a coat around my naked torso. Whoever's at the door clearly has something urgent to tell me. Just a moment! I reach the door and open it, expecting to see Lyle or Leif. Prince Adrius? He recoils a bit at my surprise, but quickly composes himself. Lord Leuven. He looks me up and down with a judgmental gaze. I see you still aren't dressed for the ball. I awkwardly pull the coat more tightly around my body to cover up. It's the best I can do, considering I'm only wearing a pair of loose trousers and no shoes or socks. I was resting. What could he possibly want with me? Why would he be here to see me? Usually, whenever we have a simple chat, it's in the dining chambers of the halls. Please, come in. I sure for him to enter, but he stays standing in the doorway. I decide to humor myself and make him uncomfortable by insisting upon it more. Your Highness, it's very cold out, and I would rather not let a draft in. He's hesitant, but walks into the room and takes a seat in one of the chairs, dusting it off, for, dusting it off first, of course. I doubt it's outside your understanding as to why I am here. I take a seat at my desk and, my, and place my hands on my lap. Actually, I have not the slightest idea. It's still a bit surprising. Yes, I suppose that it is. After this brief interaction, a long moment of silence follows. He sits there, tracing his fingers along the patterns on the fabric of the chair he's sitting in. Every moment that passes, I just wish that I was somewhere else. I can no longer bear the senseless amount of silence that echoes throughout the room, so I clear my throat. It's nice that your horns have grown back already. He instinctively brings his hands up to his horns and runs his fingers up to the tips. Yes, that oil does, does seem to work wonders. I take it you'll be able to attend the ball tonight, then, without any embarrassment. He lowers his hands from caressing his horns and looks at me. No, I don't think I will be attending tonight, as much as my father wishes me to. He pauses for several seconds, looking out the window with a glare in his eyes. I apologize for my outburst the other day. It was an embarrassing moment for me, and I regret my actions. Do my ears deceive me? Am I getting a heartfelt apology from the prince himself? I can't help but wonder if this ever happens. He almost choked those last few words out. Your Highness, all is forgiven. It did not affect me as bad as you, as you would think. That's good to hear. But that is not why I am here. There he is. It was all formality, as I predicted. The reason I am here has to do with yesterday's events. He sits up a bit and stares into my eyes. His eyes are big and have bright golden brown pupils. Oh yes, I was acting a bit irrational. I must have been terribly delirious, but I am feeling much better now that... You know what happened. I'm sorry, what? My mother's death. What happened ten years ago. As relevant as it is, I... How did you come to find out about this information? You arrive here a clueless, naive ambassador. Clearly only armed with your people's skills, and yet... He pauses to shake his head as he prepares for his next rude yet witty comment. And yet you still lack in that regard. Now wait just a moment. And now only a little over two weeks into your stay here, and you already know of this tragic event. And with such detail. He stares at me with an intensity I've never seen before. It's almost as if you were there when it happened. His fist is clenched tightly enough to where I can see the fabric stretching and creasing. I'm not really sure what he's implying by this, but I know that he is definitely not happy. All sense of casual conversation is now gone as tension rises in the room. I place my hands on the desk and drum my fingers on an open book. Yes, I guess it would seem like that. But as unbelievable as it may sound, it was from a nightmare. He lowers his fist, yet still maintains his deadly eye contact. I've come to the conclusion that it was pure coincidence, nothing more. This isn't the case, I would this isn't, isn't the case, but I would rather not make a fool of myself in front of him as I did the others. The more and more time passes, the more I regret reacting in such an undignified manner. I understand that almost everyone would react in that way if something like that happened to them, but I can't feel but I can't help but feel stupid. It was merely a few traits from the nightmare coinciding with the actual events. No. Some of those traits could not have been coincidental. Everything from your account was perfectly accurate to how Father described the original event. Wait just a moment. 
How do you know so much about what happened yesterday? He quickly stands up from his chair. Never mind how I know. I don't know what you're up to, but I don't like it. I quickly stand from my desk. He can clearly see I am not enjoying these vague accusations. I don't like how he thinks he can treat people this way, and if I'm going to be advising him in the distant future, he needs to learn what that means. I don't know what you're talking about, Adrius, but I'm certainly not up to anything. You may be the prince, but don't let that give you the impression that you can come into my quarters and accuse me of treasonous behavior. I haven't said or done anything that should lead you to this conclusion. After I'm done shouting, I feel a sense of triumph. You would expect someone like him to be completely shocked by my sudden outburst. He's probably never been told off by anyone beneath him before. Despite my judgments, he just runs his hand along the arm of the chair as he walks towards the door, looking me in the eye. I never said anything about treason. He reaches the door and opens it, a thick gust of cold air flying into the room and settling to the floor. Oh man, that ooh! Oh, oh. oh Prince Adrius is up to something. I mean, I can understand how he would be very, very skeptical and suspicious of a guy who started sh sh ranting and raving about the death of his mother. I mean, yeah, that would raise a few eyebrows, especially if you are the son of the woman who was killed. But anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it right there. It was kind of a great kind of a great place to leave it at anyway. Adrian's walking out the door. But anyway, guys, thank you. Oh, let me see if he says anything. Let's see if he says anything. Father has told me that once I am king, you will be advising me. Even though I feel that is something I should choose. Allow me to bestow some advice to you, Lord Leuven, before that time comes. He steps out into the hall, holding the door open. I would watch what I say and do in this castle. The walls have ears, and oh, how they love to listen. With that, he exits, the door closing behind him with a muffled thud. Alright guys, I'm going to pause it there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell until the next video. I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!